overcoming maker design discouragement, sweater problems, how to get free audiobooks, and maybe an exciting collaboration with Jessica Carey from The Hook Nook? Let's chat. <laughs> I'm Anya from Peony and Time, and today is the first episode of the Peony and Time podcast. So, I have some really exciting things planned for the channel this year. I still plan on continuing to come out with project tutorials, complete pattern tutorials, hopefully once a month, but I also wanted to start doing a podcast so that we can chat and get to know each other better because it's really fun. Um, so this will be a process of some trial and error, experimenting, seeing what works, what doesn't. So I would love for you to tell me um, what you're enjoying, what you maybe would also love to see. Just let me know. Let's talk about it. So some of the plans that I have for the podcast will be that some of the episodes, it'll just be us. That means you and me. Talking about works in progress, um, yarn we're really excited about right now, and a ton of other fun things that I have up my sleeve. Um, and then some of them, you guys, I'm so excited. I have guests planned for future episodes of the podcast coming really soon. And one of those is my dear friend, Jessica Carey of The Hook Nook, who has been oh, just a huge maker inspiration in my life, as well as just being you guys, seriously, the loveliest human being ever. So I very soon have a date planned with her to sit down and chat about all sorts of maker-related issues and yarn we're loving. She has such golden advice for makers. And so, yeah, be checking back to see when her, um, when her interview podcast goes live. And that is just one of the maker interviews I'm really excited about. So stay tuned and yeah. So yeah, I hope you grab a cup of coffee. Let's just sit down and talk about yarn and the maker life for a while. Okay, so first let's talk about some works in progress because I don't know about you, but I always have <laughs> so many projects on my needles. Yeah, I get really distracted and excited about new projects. So it's sometimes hard to just stick with one and make sure it gets all the way finished. Um, but yeah, I feel like as long as you have like a good, overall ratio of like projects started to projects finished that like that's okay so if you don't agree with me then that's fine okay so one fun work in progress is a pair of socks look how cute this yarn is isn't this adorable so I am using Susan B. Anderson's pattern. It's just called How I Knit My Socks. Um, I think my sister-in-law was the one who put me onto it. Um, and if you just Google Susan B. Anderson, How I Knit My Socks, the pattern will come up. It's so lovely and easy. I've adjusted it just a little bit. I think I cast on maybe fewer stitches because my feet are like pretty narrow. So I did some trial and error there to just adjust it a little bit so that the pattern fits just perfectly on my feet. Um, so that was like <laughs> a little bit of math for the heel section, um, but it's really not that bad. But what I love about this pattern is that it is just like a nice plain vanilla sock. Um, I really love, I love having some more detailed projects, but I really love having something that's just kind of mindless on the needles too for those times that you just want to sit down, maybe, you know, after a long day, watch some Netflix and just just enjoy something that you don't have to think about too hard. Also, um, if you watch my Chow Gu needle review, you'll know that I'm loving knitting these <laughs> on Chow Gu needles. Um, and it's so nice because working with the high quality needles like this has allowed me to switch to left-handed knitting for smaller projects like this. So that makes this so much faster. And actually, I feel like a lot easier. Socks just knit up so much faster. Um, yeah, knitting left-handed. So yeah. That's great. Um, I do not remember the name of this yarn. It was a gift though for my dear friend Laurel over at Alabaster and Pearl. Hey Laurel. Um, yeah, I love it. Um, it's just so fun to work in colorful stripes and then not have any ends to weave in afterwards. So I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Okay, next project. I've been working on my Zermatt cardigan from We Are Knitters. It's um, coming together great. You knit this on gigantic needles. So it knits up really fast. I've hit a little bit of a snag, I'll be honest. Um, 
and it just slowed down my roll a little bit. So because I'm really tall, I always have to add extra rows to my sweaters. Otherwise, they end up looking like crop tops and that's just not really my style. Um, so since I had to add extra layers to the giant back panel and to the front panels, um, I didn't have quite as much yarn as would have been great for the collar. And the collar is actually, um, it's designed in kind of a different technique than I've tried before. Um, so it was really, it's been really interesting to try it, but um, since I was running out of yarn, I decided that I would just adjust the pattern a little bit to um, to make it work with the amount of yarn that I had left. And I was like, oh, I've, I did some research online. I've seen other people kind of adjust it like this. It's gonna be fine. Well, it still ended up not working out quite right. Good news is I figured out what I need to adjust to fix it, but bad news is, um, yeah, I had to rip it out. And so now I've got just like a bunch of live stitches hanging off here. It's fine though. It's chunky yarn, they're not going anywhere. Um, yeah, so that did slow me down a little bit, but all the major pieces have been knitted up. I just need to um, get back on that collar. Does that ever happen to you? You're just like working away on something really well and then realize you've done something, <laughs> realize you did something bad, <laughs> realize that you did something wrong and um, you just have to like set it aside for maybe a couple weeks before you really feel like emotionally ready to start it again. Nope, just me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so those are um, my main works in progress right now. And yeah, even though I'm a little bit sad about having to rip out that entire collar, um, I am really excited to get that done and to be able to wear it because it is still real chilly up here in the Northwest. Okay, next, let's talk about overcoming discouragement with design. Okay, so has anyone else been really excited about a design and then for one reason or another, you've had to revamp the entire thing and it's really discouraging? <laughs> um, that happened to me last week. So for my pattern tutorials and everything, I have patterns planned way in advance. Um, and there's been one in particular that I've been very excited about. I bought all of the yarn for my test model and then all of the yarn for the project that I'll knit on camera um, and have just been dying to, to get started on it. Well, and then randomly last week I was on Instagram and someone just released a pattern that you guys, I kid you not, it was almost exactly the same as this pattern that I had been planning. Of course, nothing weird going on, like there was no um, copying of designs or, I mean, goodness gracious. But I think because I love going with kind of classic, simple looks, I'm not, when it comes to the things that I design, I'm less likely at this point in my design life to, um, design a pattern that is super duper complicated, mostly because that involves a lot of math, which is not my favorite thing. Who has flashbacks to being in school and telling their mom over homework that they were never going to use math in real life? You were right, mom, I'm sorry, I need the math. <laughs> okay, so, but really, that really does just happen. You know, there are only so many ways of combining knit and purl stitches um, and you're, you're gonna come up with the same idea as somebody else sometimes. So, you know, that's just knit life. But honestly, I did feel a little discouraged. So I was like, oh my gosh, I've been planning this in my brain and I've just been like dying to cast it on. Did some test watching already. But obviously I'm not gonna put out one that's exactly like something that someone just released because that would just be weird. Um, anyhow, you know, felt my feelings for a little bit. <laughs> which which I support. But then I was trying to think like, how can I turn this into an opportunity, make it something that works for me and is still a really good thing. So I was like, I know there must be some way that I can take this and make it so that the project that I end up doing will be even better. So worked on it and I came up with a design that is really different from what I had originally planned. But you guys, I'm actually legitimately even more excited about this new pattern. So that was great. <laughs> so yeah, if something like that has happened to you, I would love to hear your stories about working through that process. What did you do to turn that situation around and make it something that worked positively for you in the end? Um, or, you know, did you just feel sad for a while? Because that's real too. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. I know that's something that as makers we all are gonna end up dealing with at some point because like I said, there really are only so many 
combinations of knit and purl stitches that you can put together and uh, we all have great ideas and sometimes we just have like the same great idea. So anyhow, if you have any stories about something like that happen to you, happening to you and maybe how you worked through it, I'd love to hear about it. Comment below and let's chat. All right, moving on. Um, so probably not all of you know, but my day job is is, is as an assistant librarian, which I love. It's wonderful. Um, so I really love books. <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to chat about what I'm reading right now. Okay, so one thing slowly going through um, is this book called The Year of Living Danishly. It's by Helen Russell. One of the awesome benefits of working at a library is all the books that you get to see coming across the desk. So I found so many good books <laughs> that someone was just returning or checking out and I was like, that looks, that looks really great. I think I'm gonna put that on my list next. So you guys, this has been so good so far. I'm not done with it yet. My husband and I are both reading through this together. He's farther along than I am right now. Um, but it's super, it's super interesting. It's about this British couple who ended up moving to Denmark for a year. I don't know if they end up staying there or not, but don't tell me if you know, because no spoilers. Um, anyhow, and yeah, like the subtitle says, it's uncovering the secrets of the world's happiest country. And apparently Denmark has been ranked the world's happiest country. So it just like checks off a lot of my boxes <laughs> as far as books go, because I love being an armchair traveler. I also love real traveling too, but um, yeah, this is a lot cheaper than a ticket to Denmark. So, you know, there's that. Um, yeah, so kind of getting to, to live that sort of adventure through someone else's eyes has been really cool. Also, I love like psychology, personality profiles, all of that. And so the idea of trying to find out why maybe a certain lifestyle or cultural tendencies makes one, um, makes one people group tend to be happier than another is right up my alley. So I'm really enjoying kind of um, walking through, walking through that book. If you've read that, again, no spoilers, or um, are currently reading it, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you think. Um, okay, something else. So I mentioned free audiobooks earlier. So I didn't know about this until I started working at a library, but have you guys heard of the app Overdrive? Not a paid promotion. <laughs> um, I hadn't heard about it until I started working at a library. You guys, I use it all the time now. I love audiobooks because um, like as much as I love it, I don't always have time to sit down and actually like enjoy a cup of coffee and actually sit and read a book. But I love audiobooks because I can take that with me anywhere. So I always have an audiobook going um, on, on my Overdrive app now. And it's been really awesome. I can listen to it during my commute or when I'm like running around the house doing chores. It's been so, so nice. And you just log in with your library card number. And so it is just like checking out something from the library, except you don't have like a physical book that you have to, you know, take home and then remember to return on time. So yeah, that has been fantastic. I'm really loving that. Um, the only problem is you only get to check out an audiobook for 14 days. And so I was right in the middle of my book, um, The Cruelest Month by Louise Penny. It's the Inspector Gamache series. Um, I'm a huge fan of murder mysteries, as long as they don't get too creepy. Anyhow, yeah, so a couple friends had told me um, about um, how much they loved this Louise Penny series. So I've been listening to it and yes, it's so good. I do always feel a little bit hesitant just recommending books because not everybody has the same comfort level with um, different like intense topics with with different topics so you know just always take that with a grain of salt there may be some themes that you're um not comfortable with if you have questions comment below and we can chat about it <laughs> anyhow but yeah so you only get them for 14 days and i think i was finishing another audiobook when it automatically checked out to me so i made it about halfway through the book and it automatically returned because my time was up so that was terrible. So I'm right in the midst of this like really gripping murder mystery story. And now I am back on the hold list and have to wait, mm, I don't know, two to four weeks. Uh, <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> Anyhow, but I did move on to, does anyone read the Alan Bradley series about Flavia de Luce? So right now I'm listening to Speaking From Among the Bones. Again, it's another murder mystery. Um, um, I just, 
yeah, I don't know, give me a good British murder mystery and I am happy. Yeah, it's been a really fun series, so let me know if anyone else has read any of those, any of that series, or is reading them currently. Yeah, let's let's chat about it. All right, so back to yarny knit related things. I am really excited about some yarn that my sweet sister-in-law Lindsay, hey Linz, um, sent me for Christmas. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so pretty. So she shares my obsession with sock knitting and sent me this, let's see, Frolicking Feet Timberwolf Anemone Wildflower Frolicking Feet. Okay. Yeah, so I think Timberwolf is maybe the color name. Um, it's 100% domestic superwash merino. Um, and so this is like the color for the main body of the sock. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And it is so, so squishy. It's so, so squishy. It's, it's so nice. <laughs> Anyhow, and then this little mini skein. I don't see a color name on here, but it's so cute. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus in on this. Yeah, look how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. So, so I'll be combining these two in a pair of socks. So using this for the main body of the socks and then using this for the toes and the heels. And I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm, I've been seeing people making socks um, like that for a while and I just haven't done it yet and I've been wanting to and now here we go. So I'm really excited. I think it's going to be so pretty. The um, the mini skein obviously has like other colors in there but it, ha it really picks up some of those bluish purpley gray hues really well. So like seriously. What? how adorable of a combo is that? So, yeah. So yeah, I'll be excitedly casting those on after I finish my other sock projects. I kind of just love having um, a sock project on my needles. Like I said, for those times that you just need a little bit of like, it's like the, for me, I feel like it's like the comfort food of knitting. I've knit so many that I'm pretty comfortable with the pattern and it's just, you know, knit stitch after knit stitch, which I know some people don't love, but I really, yeah, I don't know. I find that really comforting. I love it. <laughs> All right, yeah, so that is about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this just kind of loose format chit chat session. Um, it's always a little bit nerve wracking to start something that's a completely new format or a new style. Thanks for hanging out and visiting with me. I hope you will check back and see some of the future episodes um, with very exciting guests that I am so excited to share with you guys. Yeah, I'd love it if you wanted to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, comment below, let me know what you're working on, um, books you're reading. Yeah, let's chat. <laughs> I hope you have some great coffee today. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time.